Hi, I'm Susie Becker. I'm a Libra. Um, I mean, am I supposed to say more? This is the story of a humble comic that saved the world. It starts with a brain tumor in this artist's head. No, it turns out it wasn't even a, a tumor. It was an uh, unclassifiable mass. <laughs> Susie liked to draw pictures, something humans have done since the beginning of time. I always wanted to write and illustrate books as a kid. In eighth grade, I decided, you know, it's probably something you do when you retire. And I, that was the end of my retirement planning, too, which was unfortunate. Susie's first book was a sequence of cartoons about her cat. It sold over two million copies. And two books later, she got a fellowship at Harvard to write another book. Ironically, three days after getting invited to Harvard... I had what I call my euphoria-induced seizure. Enter Ferdinand, the friendly tumor. It showed that I had a mass on my left parietal lobe. And they were like, yeah, no, that has to come out. And I, I actually believed that they should have taken away the fellowship because I wasn't the person who applied. But they kindly said, oh, we'll put a couch in your office. Six months into the fellowship... I thought, well, I'll start writing a chapter about the brain surgery. Several hundred pages later, I realized I had a book. Jumped to 2013 at a writing conference. They asked if I would be on this narrative medicine panel. And in the audience of that, someone came up and they said, well, you know, your work is really graphic medicine. There is such a thing? I, did. I didn't know there was such a thing. In 2007, Dr. Ian Williams coined the term graphic medicine and defined it as the intersection between the medium of comics and the discourse of healthcare. Graphic medicine includes stories of suffering, joy, survival, recovery, treatment, birth, death, and the strange yet unique experience of being, well, in a human body. But what makes Shoot. comics ideally suited to tell these types of stories? The graphics generally provide a, a counterpoint to the words. Things that you can't write that you can draw with memoir and, and personal narratives is this idea that you're stuck with one voice. But with graphics, you can show many versions of yourself. ADD self, hormonal self. Oh, there's a finger puppet. Scientific research shows that this kind of storytelling is good for patients, for caregivers, for mental, emotional, and even physical health. So when a graphic medicine conference came to Susie's backyard... I got on a panel, I, I was so psyched, and all of a sudden, it, when I started thinking about it, I thought, like, well, you know, my stuff isn't really comics, and maybe they're not my people. So what is graphic medicine, and what isn't? Are Leonardo da Vinci's anatomical investigations graphic medicine? I think so. M.K. Zerwick's book, Comic Nurse. Totally, totally. What about paintings by Suda the Elephant? No. Art therapy for patients? If it's a narrative, sure. Medical diagrams? No. I mean, it's, there's no story for me. Modern dance with partial words and nudity. And does it matter? I just want to expand it. I want to expand the definition of it. I want to expand the access to it. At the end of workshops and classes that I give, I ask participants to actually create a prescription for themselves for their ongoing practice of graphic medicine. Um, as an aspect of self-care, I think it's really important. So much in medicine can feel lonely, but when we tell our stories... You find out you're not alone, and so does everyone else, and that's how everything gets better. You share your secret, and you change the world. Laurie Frankel. Well, I think that, um, I think we're all set. Yay! <laughs> you did an incredible job, by the yeah, way. Thanks. <laughs> That's why you did it not easy. Remember the comic that saved the world? It could be it's just waiting to be drawn by you. Yeah.